Hört man jetzt was? Ja. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity to give a short overview over an ongoing trial in Germany, a preference-based randomized evaluation of four treatment modalities in low and early intermediate risk prostate cancer. The principal investigators is Michael Stöckle from Homburg for the German Society of Urology and myself for the German Society of Radiation Oncology. And the point is that we want to compare the four treatment arms who are standard treatments for low and intermediate risk prostate cancer, radical prostatectomy, percutaneous radiotherapy, permanent seat implantation, and also active surveillance. <clears throat> the hypothesis from our trial is that all four therapeutic strategies are not significantly different in oncological efficacy, but there will discrepancies will arise in quality of life and the therapy-related morbidity. And the primary endpoint is the cancer-related deaths from prostate cancer. Only a short point for the inclusion criteria, men aged lower than 75 years, and these are the typical criteria. This is the experimental arm for active surveillance and also for definitive radiotherapy. Um, all the others are this true to the permanent seat implantation, this for active surveillance, and this also for permanent seat implantation. These are the classical indications and the classical inclusion criteria. The exclusion criteria, we don't want to treat patients with unifocal lesions with Cleason 6 smaller than one millimeters because we think that's the best way for active surveillance. But the other points are the typical exclusion criteria due to the four treatment arm, and you know these very well. We have strict qualification criteria for the treatment sites. There must be all four therapeutic options are offered by these sites, and in case of permanent seat implantation, it's possible to work with external partners. The experience should be more than 50 prostatectomies, more than 25 primary radiotherapies, and more than 15 permanent seat implantation per year. How do we want to go from diagnosis by the urological practitioner? Um, he or she informs the patient about the study, and then there is a special video um, done by the group from Hamburg, and the patients should be informed about the study. Then the urologist uh, refers the patient to the treatment site. There should be the control for selection criteria, and then randomization will come out. The point of the study is that it is a new form of a trial. We have a forearm randomization, and it's possible for the patient to reject one or two of the treatments. It's um, no problem if he wants no radical prostatectomy, no radiotherapy, and if he rejects one option, then he can be randomized in a three-arm study, and if he rejects two options, then there will be a randomization in the two-arm randomization. And the point is, this is the classical study with the four arms, and if the patient rejects one, He can be randomized into four, three treatment arms, and if he rejects two of the treatments, then it will be possible that he should be randomized in the other six trials, and at the end of the day, all these 11 randomized trials will be put together for the evaluation. <clears throat> Percutaneous irradiation for low-risk patients should be 76 gray, And the point is that all patients must have an intensity-modulated radiation therapy in combination with image-guided radiotherapy. And that's very easy. The early, the early intermediate risk, that means Gleason 7A, the total dose is 78 gray, also with IMRT and IGRT. The major point is that we have a very strict central pathological review before starting the trial. Um, every biopsy of the patient will be reviewed by Chris Janssen. He is the chief of the pathologist reviews and all his colleagues. And randomization will take place after central pathology review. We have a strict quality assurance um, accompanying the trial um, for prostatectomy, for percutaneous radiotherapy, also for all four treatment arms. 25 of the patients will be centrally randomized for evaluation during the treatment, and if there are major problems, then it would be possible to exclude the site from the ongoing study. The primary endpoint, and that's very important, is 
PCA-specific mortality 13 years after treatment, and this is the planned minimal follow-up, and the median follow-up must be 15 years. And we suggested that the anchor is radical prostatectomy, and with a median follow-up of 15 years, you have 90% overall survival in this arm. We have a non-inferiority margin of 5%, and the statistics are coming from Professor Wellig from Heidelberg, who was the founder of this log rank test for non-inferiority. The case estimation with a power of 90% and an alpha error of 5% with a dropout rate of 10% in the ideal way, if the patient will accept the randomization for all four arms, should be about 5,000 patients, but this is not what we expect. This is the extreme scenario, what is not expectable. When all patients accept only a randomization between two therapies, we need up to 15,000 patients. It's also not possible to do. What we expect as our expected scenario is that every 20% of the patients accept the forearm and these three-arm trials and every 5% in the other eight studies and then altogether we need 7,500 patients. The start of the trial should be January 2013, which is the ongoing first patient, and so the end is 2030, and altogether we need about 60 to 100 sites, and for the moment we have um, 69 sites who accept it, and the estimation is that we need per year of randomization nearby 1,900 patients, and this should be possible within these sites who accepted the treatment. <coughs> And this is the plan of Germany where the sites who want to take part in the study. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. A very interesting uh, <coughs> study to come. Is there any question from the audience? Uh, do you have secondary endpoints? Because uh, the first one is... Uh, Probably all patients will be alive uh, uh, 13 years after the, the treatment. Um, yes, of course, we have a lot of normal secondary endpoints, but it was a major discussion over two years when the German cancer aid and also the German insurances who will give the money for the trial, nearby 25 million euros, um, we need an international accepted endpoint, and this is prostate cancer-specific mortality. We have six more secondary endpoints as the typical points of quality of life and also of um, overall survival and biochemical progression-free survival. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay, I think we shall move on.